This is Andy Perrault for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I am joined by Liam Chibbers, the manager to the social media stars, the YouTube stars, whatever people want to refer to them as. Liam, how are you doing? I'm good, Andy. Good to speak to you again, mate. It's been a, been a couple of years since obviously all the, the KSI fights and then the last Gibb fight. And now this uh, this social media latest one in Miami. I knew you'd be on to me <laughs> with all the with all the fallout and issues that occurred. Liam, so as you say, it has been a while. We've tried to tie in, but for one reason or another, we haven't been able to until now. But we're here and what should have probably been maybe a bit more of a straightforward interview has been maybe a bit more stressful for yourself over the past few days. And Eason Gibb, uh, many people, certainly in the boxing world, will remember him for, for his most recent bout before the Taylor Holder one with Jake Paul. Mm. Fight scorecards were in his favour. Fight yeah. was read as a draw in his bout with Taylor Holder. First and <laughs> foremost, before we do come on to the, the controversy around that, just your thoughts on Gibbs' performance, his return to the ring, and I, I suppose some demons he was able to exercise from the Jake Paul fight. Absolutely. I mean, he showed everything we'd hoped he would show in the Jake Paul fight. Uh, he's, he's come on a, a hell of a lot since then. You could see physically. Obviously, he had to, he had to uh, add a bit of weight to get closer to Jake. In this one, he could go down to where he wanted to be, really, under 185. He ended up about 179. Um, and he was he was ripped. He was training. And, and you know, you're saying about the demons. Yeah, that, that hit him hard, that, that Jake Paul. Not necessarily the loss, but just the manner of it. The three knockdown rule, feeling he could have carried on. He just needed to get over that first round and get his feet set, um, but never got the chance. So, yeah, he was embarrassed. The hate on, not the hate, but the, 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 the jokes of the memes of the internet and the millions of fans who, who follow these guys. Of course, he had to live with that for that whole period. And we were trying to get him a fight pretty soon after that. And then literally that was the last event or anything. We Last time I took a flight before now uh, because of COVID, and so he's had to wait very patiently, lockdowns, bit of training, things were opening up and uh, he's been desperate to get back in the ring. And we nearly, we nearly arranged and signed a, a UK fight for a round now anyway. And then all of a sudden the, the, the social media, uh, the YouTubers versus TikTokers, one came up. Uh, we also knew the organizers and some of the people involved. And as soon as we organized, uh, we arranged Deji on, on the card um, and there was a clear opening on the card and, and, Gibb was desperate to switch from the event we were setting for him up here to move on to that because of the hype of it and a bit more global, the American audience as well. And he said, look, you've got to get me on that, that, that card. I've got to fight and I will fight anyone. And um, the one person who was left on the card was Taylor Holder. And the reason was, is people had heard and seen footage that this kid's been, even though he hasn't fought properly uh, at an event, he has been trained in boxing for many years and he was very slick, great, so apparently fantastic slip uh, defense and uh, repertoire of punches. And we've seen like this guy could be, could be better than most of, or all of these, 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 these new guys, these influencers to boxing. And so he was a bit of a skate. He was scaring a lot of people off, but Gibbs said, I don't care. Bring me Holder. Um, I, I, I'm ready for it. He said, and he was like, are you sure? You know, you know, he's obviously all eggs in one basket, everything on the line, having lost with a Jake Paul. There was no, there was no, you couldn't have a repeat of that. That's it then, isn't it? So it was a case of absolutely um, 100% life switch to it, dedicated to it, as, as you need to, as KSI has done before and successfully Gibb did this time as well. Got a new, uh, couple of new team members involved, a few of the old ones, and really just, just went, went absolutely ham on his skills. Everything from his defense, his combinations, his footwork, his uh, ring, you know, distance of, uh, from the opponent being a, a taller, longer reaching guy. He worked on it all. And uh, yeah, you never know until you get in there. And, you know, a lot of people might have crumbled under the, the nerves because of what happened before. But he actually came in more serious. The team said, don't do your usual WWE, you know, extravagant in, uh, entrance this time. Just walk straight in there run through your your, uh, your points in your head and do the business. And he, and he absolutely did. It was absolutely incredible. I, I mean, I've seen him in training, and but when you're there in the front, the act to actually put it so, you know, calculated and calm, as, almost like a seasoned amateur pro, you know, someone who's done a lot more than him, to see him actually put it in together and f for five rounds, relentless, uh, the cardio work really paid off as well. And so, yeah, all hands, you know, ha you know, Hats off to, to Gibb, and I think the, the social media world were, were blown away, very surprised how easily he won that. Liam, moving forward onto the night itself, as we say, a terrific performance from Gibb, but the controversy at the end of the fight, what should have been a unanimous decision read yeah. out, in favour was read as a majority draw. Hmm. 
just your thoughts on hearing those scorecards and then obviously the chaos that has ensued since with yourself having to try and chase it up and yeah. get it officially corrected? It, it was incredible. I think, you know, the amount of people watching, big influencers, all the big UK guys, US, everyone was watching live. And the second that happened, the internet went meltdown because everybody knew obviously Gibb had won. Taylor realised it. Gibb was everybody there in the audience. They, Unfortunate for Taylor, they all started booing him, of course, and cheering Gibb because everybody knew. Um, and at first, the initial thought was, oh, it's rigged. It's in America. Taylor Holder's this golden boy because he's supposed to be quite good. Maybe, you know, he'll go on and do more things. He's maybe the money the ticket, even though Gibb had way more engagement and views and, and sold more pay view than anybody other than Deji actually um it, that wasn't the case so I knew that probably wasn't the case it, it wasn't a money thing it wasn't a, it wasn't an event organized I knew them well enough and the event organizers were, were very new to this it was very much a tv type uh production uh background for these guys they were all on short-term contracts etc there was no apart from the investors who you never got really to see or, or talk to there was no reason for the for the fight to be rigged it, it just wasn't so I just knew it was a mistake um and when they read the numbers out there, there, were, there wasn't even a draw on the card it was 49 46 49 49, 46, 50, 46, majority draw. <laughs> I just, it was just, that's a mistake. And someone just, I couldn't even get to Miami because the, the border was closed. I was trying for weeks and weeks. We couldn't get the O1s. We couldn't get the exemptions in time. Obviously I had to set, send the teams out to Mexico three weeks in advance to, to move their camps out there just so they were definitely there. And so, I, uh, you know, if I'd have been there, I said I'd run on the blooming to the side of the judges and rip that out of their hands and, and, and look, but obviously being just on the phone from the UK, trying to manage the team from there. I had to sort of literally try and find what, what had gone wrong. We speculated that maybe they'd read the 46, uh, 49 46s in the, in the heat of the moment wrongly as 46 46. Um, and because you obviously need two draws. So that could, that was the only thing I thought of that it could possibly be, um, which is crazy because 46 46, you can't score 46 46 on a five, five round fight anyway. And there was you know, not enough knockdowns and 10, eight rounds for that to be possible. So I knew it was a mistake and, uh, it was just a case of trying to find the person who actually wrote that mistake because the organizers had no clue that was, you know, in the hands of the production people, they then were off for the weekend. As soon as that show had run down, no one, and uh, you know, after parties and everything, you just couldn't get hold of anybody to try and actually rectify it. So the way I finally got hold of uh, the decision maker with the ISKA, the commission, they do a lot of uh, different combat sports uh, commissioning. They supplied obviously the judges, the, um, the referee, et cetera, and they were the ones making the decisions. It was how can who who there can actually look at this now? Because all the hate on social media was running straight at social gloves and the poor social media kid who who doesn't it wasn't even an employee of theirs, he was just running the socials. The millions of impressions of hate towards that guy. Luckily, everyone else was sort of you know out of the way of that. So it was okay, how do I get hold of this guy? I wrote a couple of emails off, tried to find phone numbers, and I got very lucky. A journalist at the Daily Ma uh, sorry, Daily Mirror he got in touch asking for comment about it because he'd reached out to the commission asking why it was a draw. And he'd actually got a reply from them. Um, their reply was, oh, it's an exhibition fight. So nobody wins if it goes to a decision. A bit like the Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul on the week before, same stadium. You know, you'd think, well, that makes sense. However, we'd already agreed that with the commission and with the organizers, that wasn't the case for our fights. Um, that's why there were three judges there. That's why they scored. And that's why they called out the, the results at the end is because it was a scored. It was a result. Two fights before in the card went to a decision and that was called correctly a unanimous decision to that winner. So obviously I, that is, that was complete balls. Um, so it was a case of, well, I've got to tell this guy that wasn't the case and uh, confront him. So I wrote to the guy who luckily I got the contacts from, wrote this war and peace message from uh, screenshots of everybody who has any authority in boxing, clearly showing it couldn't be a draw, let alone a majority draw. Michael Buffer, he was saying, well, I, I you know, I'm pretty good at maths but, and I can't work this one out to, you know, all the big influences, all the hate of these videos throwing and uh, really just showing it, explaining what it meant to, to give to actually get it right rather than just leave it be. Um, and this guy said, call me. And I called him straight away. And before I could have a go at him or say, look, just, can you just look at the scorecard again? He already had, and he was apologetic, like a never known anybody who was so embarrassed and he, he blamed it on being a bit busy around the event doing all these different tasks for the for the organizers who, who hadn't done this much before or, or at all and he and how he literally had just glanced at the scorecards quickly and had read those scores wrong uh, 
Um, and uh, I showed, showed, he sent me the, the actual card, which the announcer read out, and it was quite clearly the 49-46, 49-46, 50-46, majority draw. The point was, it was scored as a win. It was a unanimous decision. It was just read wrong. So Gibb had always won, but the world didn't realise it because of the, uh, the, the announcer had, uh, had just literally read what was on the card. What was, not just Gibbs' reaction on the night, but Gibbs' kind of, his follow-up feelings over over the coming days until he was able to get the result corrected. How did Gibbs feel about it all? Oh, as you can imagine, they stole his moment, regardless of it now. It, it's great that he's got it and he's got the relief and the world's gone, you know, fantastic, great, justice is done. And therefore, it's probably got a bit more traction because of what's happened. And in, in, in hindsight, it's not a bad thing for Gib or, or it's bad for the event because obviously their reputation of being able to screw up a result like that <laughs> wasn't great. But yeah, he's really happy now uh, and, and he's getting the plaudits uh, and everything correctly. But yeah, on the, at the time, he knew absolutely he'd won. If you listen to his, his uh, post, post-match post interview in the ring, he was he was ra- angry and he was saying to Taylor Holder, you can't beat me. I've absolutely smashed you here, mate. Let's get, get it on again with 10 ounce gloves. I'll knock you out clean. And he was he was he was so pent up with all that. But, you know, he went back, he calmed down. But he just was like, this is he in his mind. They'd rigged it because he was the UK guy fighting over there. Taylor Holder was the sort of poster boy for the, for, for the fight and originally, even though Gibb ended up being the, the, the A side and, and walking second, et cetera, just because of the, the size of his audience. Um, but yeah, no, he was, he, was, he was convinced that either a judge had been paid or something, all those negative thoughts. So it was really for me to just say, look, I think it's this, I think it's a mistake and we'll get to the bottom of it, just, just hang fire. And, uh, and he really, he, he quite, quite rightly did and um you know didn't get too het up about it effing and blinding was pretty professional because i think he realized this is just too big a, a mistake for it to be real so yeah he was happy in the end <laughs> got it overturned gibbs victorious what more does he want to do with the sporting world is this something is it just a hobby for him is it something that he just enjoys or can he see himself returning to the ring if the right opportunity presented itself Absolutely that. Yeah, the right opportunity. I mean, I think before this fight, he, he, you know, he was he was down to fight anyone who'd fight him with a reasonable audience, even if he was carrying the promotion because he had to exercise, he had to exercise that, those demons from the Jake Paul fight. And this whole thing was the, the narrative was redemption in Miami and until we got the decision even though the performance was had redeemed him, we needed it in, in writing, didn't we? So in terms of now, absolutely, we're, we're obviously taking the week off. You know, he's reveling in his victory, taking all the plot hits, as you do. But I, I think next week we'll be, we'll be talking and planning about, about coming, um, what, what to do next. Um, opponents is always the problem in this YouTube space. There are very few who are willing to do it, willing to put those months that you need to do it properly in. Um, and then obviously then you have weight, the weight, uh, not necessarily weight classes, but, being within a certain weight of each other to get a commission to actually sanction it without headgear with the right rules that you want. Otherwise you you've got full headgear, 16 ounce gloves and three, two minute rounds. If you can't get, you know, a decent a match on the fight. So it's never easy. And that's why we don't do more of these. And that's why when we did go to, when I took the, the sort of KSI Logan off the YouTube platform to take it to, to, to Hearn and, uh, and, and the zone. And we, we sort of shopped out those rights to everybody from Showtime to ESPN. The whole point with that was, um, you know, make it a little bit more serious, a bit more professional and all around that main event because it's so hard to find that YouTube card that these guys did great actually in America making this card. And it was one of it. It was a bit of a throwback to the original Joe Weller KSI and then the KSI Logan One Manchester where it was all just influencers and no one was pretending to be a, fi- uh, a pro. So it had a really great feeling again to it. But it is very hard to find that amount of cards matched um, because like you say, you know, Gibble have scared a few guys off who aren't prepared to take it as seriously as he is. Um, but he wants to keep doing it. He's got the bug. He's got the, uh, he's, he's addicted to the, to the fight game now. And uh, I think that's what, what happens to a lot of guys once they, uh, they get in and they, they see a bit of success in it too. He, he'd love to go again. Um, but you're right. I haven't got a name. You know, if, if, if a couple of other people on the card had won their fights uh, instead of lost, maybe that people like Bryce Hall, he'd have been a good option. Um, Bryce wants to fight Deji and other people now, but we'll have to think about, you know, that Gibbs, Gibbs, Gibbs standard has, has put him right back up there in the mix with the better guys now. So it's, um, it's going to be harder, probably, if anything. If it had lost, yeah, everyone would have wanted a piece of him, um, but he's shown some skill now. So I think it's going to be tricky. 
you've seen how Jake Paul's kind of managed his boxing career since the, the he's began in the sport himself. Yeah. He started looking to face the UFC guys. He's talking about potential actual boxers. In Gibbs' case, is he purely just focusing on YouTubers? Has he acknowledged that there is a lot more risk with regards to just health more than anything of stepping in there with a professional athlete who has done this for his entire life? Or is he willing to actually face somebody who has previously fought in some form of a, a combat sport? I think, I think he probably would. I mean, let's not make no mistake about it. Jake Paul's playing it very well. He's not actually fighting proper boxers. Um, you know, you, you, you saw the Ben Askren fight. I mean, I think the thing with Jake Paul, yeah, he's doing a great job and he's really committed to it. Um, it is all on the back of what we created with KSI and Jake was always on our undercards or our B sides. And he had, he really didn't have, and even when he fought Gibb in Miami as the A side of that fight, it was still only the co-main event. He really didn't have the, the, the power of the, and the engaged audience that people he, he pretends he has. And I think the people in boxing thinks he has, you know, he has 20 million subscribers on YouTube and his huge social media numbers behind him, but that's an old, old Jake Paul when he was just a pranker and, and, and he had a lot of young kids audience since he's turned to boxing, same with Logan, believe it or not, they don't bring the, uh, the sales and the engagement that the KSI does. They're not in his league, even Jake Paul now. Yes. He's had a few nice highlight reel first round knockouts, which really helps. And he's fantastic at playing that villain and and making the the niche market of, of combat sports and MMA actually think he's bigger than he is. Um, and he's riding on the back of that really nicely. Um, and he's picking his opponents, but he, he's clearly good. Um, not not going to say he's not, I'm, you know, just because I'm KSI's manager, I'm not going to stick the boot and say, oh, Jake Paul's nothing. We'd whip his ass. You know, it's going to take a lot of work to get to that level and beat him. But you know, he is playing it quite cleverly. Have you ever seen anybody within, a, I don't know, 20 pounds of him or, you know, four inches in height? He's always cle clever with his opponent. Even Tyrone Woodley is far smaller than him. Um, so, But it, that's going to be a great, interesting fight if, if Woodley can get through a few rounds with him. But, you know, Gibb wouldn't have a problem doing the same sort of thing, I think. But Gibb... Gib, he, his heart is as a YouTuber and he loves that sort of big engaged audience uh, event rather than, you know, a studio sort of thriller type thing. I'm sure he would do if the money, money and the opponent were right, but it's not definitely, it, it goes against his sort of principles at the moment of the whole where it came from, who he's fought and, and what we built with him. I, I don't think he'd necessarily just automatically jump in with a, an MMA fighter unless it really made sense and he, he felt it could be a, a good contest. With Jake, you just mentioned JJ there. They've both spoken in the past about potentially facing each other. There was more so a, a buzz and a build on the back of Jake's fight with Gibb. Yeah. Do you think we will see KSI and Jake Paul meet in the ring at some point? Probably, yeah. I mean, we were we were positive of it after that. And then COVID hit. Uh, JJ also got really into his music and it really flew. You know, that he's... Um, the biggest selling debut album of 2020, platinum selling songs. Who'd have thought that at that time? Uh, and that is really, while well, COVID's on and you can't train and fight to, in front of an arena, obviously that took his, his attention and, and he's and like anything he does, he'll put his all into, into something. And that's the project right now. New album launching next month, tours, festivals, Basically, that takes the year out again here. There's no Jake Paul fight. He would need five months or more of, of proper camp and training to, to consider that. Um, there were possible, there are possible sort of fillers, uh, tune-up fights, you know, perhaps slightly less opponents that we've been considering and looking at. But, you know, one of them was potentially if, if Bryce Hall had won at the weekend, but he lost badly. So he's not even, he, 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 you know, it's not a credible opponent for JJ now. So back to the drawing board a little bit on that, but he's in no rush. You know, he is training you know, a couple of times a week got good trainers just to keep dip it keep his toe in there um nothing majorly killer in terms of a camp yet uh, which you can just switch on we're ready to go when he is but uh i keep saying next year next year we'll see how covid goes but obviously this music career of his is really uh, blowing up so he's got to ride that ride that wave and ultimately jake does he need jake paul no does jake paul now need him less probably because he is going into that sort of more, more celebrity mainstream area anyway. Will it come back round and the two meet? I, I think it must do. I think it really, the, Jake knows deep down, he, whatever he said, by the way, he didn't do those numbers of pay-per-view for the, the Ben fight, <laughs> and no one's officially said those. That's just him being Jake Paul again. Look at me. And aren't I popular? He knows if he really wants to make proper money in these fights beyond what he's pretending to make, KSI is the only ticket for that. So, and I know he'd love to, to have a go at KSI after everything that, uh, he, he, you know, his brother losing 
um, against JJ and, and getting that Paul name back. He'll never he'll never be able to to move on until it happens. But it's in JJ's um, hands really in timing. It's Liam. It's one thing which I've when the time came for us to do an interview. I did always want to ask you about is kind of the growth of JJ from YouTube to going into boxing to his music career and everything he does away from it. Has it surprised you, boy, just how far he's been able to come and the different kind of experiences he's been able to have from that young boy who just started out recording himself playing FIFA? I think so, yeah. I mean, I've been working with JJ since uh, 2012. So, yeah, nine years now. And, yeah, I mean, he had this absolute uh, hysterical laugh and this this awe about him which just made you like the guy. And, uh, you know, his content, that's why he's grown and he's uh, been so successful. But his work ethic was always fabulous, you know, and I think that's the thing. Like he says himself, he does himself down and says, oh, I've got no talent. I just work hard. No, he has talent, but talent's not enough. Um, absolutely not enough. And so as soon as he did, you know, put his uh, attention into into boxing right from the start with Joe Weller and then making it bigger with Logan, he says, OK, now we need to launch a bit more mainstream, a bit more US. I've got my music coming out. How can we integrate that? So obviously we did the ring walk with Rick Ross and, uh, and, and all those things and that launched his album. There's always a plan and it's always got to be better than the time before, which is why we had to go off YouTube and make this this uh, uh, a bigger with the, the, yeah, the sort of budgets and the, the guarantees of, of less risk from the, uh, the pay-per-views and the piracy and all that doing it ourselves. Self. so the mu it's, it's exactly the same with the music if he's going to do it he'll do it properly and you know he's got it when and it's the same with youtube ksi it, it's just a his mentality it goes beyond pretty much anybody i know in terms of actually achieving but you know he's not afraid to to to, to go and fail he, when has he ever failed but um i think that's the point he, he's fearless and uh, he's, he's achieved so much that you know his mind is like well why not um let's go let's go and, go and smash this he's happy to put himself out there he, he's from the early days of social media of trolls and hates and things like that the majority of people actually quite like him which is, makes it a little, little easier but he's never been afraid of criticism from any 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 angle and i think that's the thing he's, he's bulletproof to it all that he's come from the early days before all these other people were getting um you know knocked down he he uh he doesn't get affected that way. So yeah, it's all, all or nothing with him. And uh, I'm not surprised at all that he, he's, we've been able to do the boxing to the level we've got um, because he really is the one guy involved in the YouTube scene with the boxing that has the actual engaged audience that have followed him and actually really want to see him and pay to see him. Um, the others are all ridden off the back of that. No names, Logan and Jake. <laughs> um, Liam, moving kind of back to his card, KSI's brother Deji was unsuccessful on it against Vinny Hacker. I just want to get a word in on Deji, yeah. just your thoughts on his defeat. Yeah, no, really disappointed and for Deji. We, you know, we we organised that too. And uh, it was a tough camp, you know, having to get out to, to Mexico to set up a, 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 a new setup there and translators to get the gym set up and all that. It was all quite distracting, really. But but he's quite, quite level-headed himself. Um, he had to get down to a certain weight and he got down to it. He was way over 200 pounds uh, a few weeks out worked. You know, people don't realize he did work pretty hard to get down to under the 185, but obviously he was at a starting point where he was never going to look like a ripped boxer. And, and that, you know, a lot of people saw him at the way and they thought, Oh, he's not trained. He's not, he had, um, he, he admits he probably could have done more. Um, obviously needed to do more because his cardio ran out in the third round when he was dominating and winning the fight. I think he was, my, my thoughts on it are he's, he's getting a lot of slightly unwarranted, um, you know, criticism. I think he actually looked pretty good. His reactions were good. He had that straight hand left was powerful. He just couldn't get the guy out there in the two rounds because he was wearing 16 out gloves. I mean, he dominated. If they were lighter gloves, I think the guy would have got stopped early. But as soon as he'd, he'd, he'd uh, emptied the tank, the, the, the closest thing I can think of in, in terms of a combat sport equivalent was when Conor McGregor knocked down Nate Diaz in the first fight six or seven times in those first few rounds and then just absolutely gassed out in the third. It was very similar to that, winning the fight. Uh, but all, all respect to Vinny, uh, we did, had no idea he'd be that good. He was slick. He was he, he was he was obviously pretty fit anyway. He was always quite, you know, he's an Instagram model, for God's sake. He works out and he's got ripped abs and uh, look, looks a pretty boy anyway. So, But to apply himself to, 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 to get enough skills to, to get through that was was good on him Deji's really disappointed 
you know, there's a lot of criticism and, and, and hate towards him. Even JJ's, you know, said exactly his mind towards him online about how, you know, what he needs to do going forward. But the first thing Deji did was message and say, I need to get back in. In the same way as Gib did last year. I need to get back in. Who can I fight? And there are people already asking and there are actual pro teams and trainers associated with different organisation and promoters offering to, to take him under his wing and, uh, you know, help with that if he needs it in addition to his existing team or, or, or not. Um, so yeah, he, he's, uh, he wants to take it even, you know, another step and he's, people are saying he should retire. He's lost twice now. No, no, he, he, um, it sometimes takes people a couple of slaps in the face to, to, to realize what they need to do rather than the one. And Deji, Deji's just been a little slower to, to, uh, come to, come to terms with that than say a gib. Um, so, but he's up for it and he wants another one. Liam, uh, we both, well, we all know that in the past, of- KSI, Jay, uh, KSI and Deji may not have had the, the best of relationships. have been frosty at times. As a man in the middle, man who works with both, has it ever been difficult for yourself? Have you ever found yourself in kind of a tough situation where either of them may not be happy or may want something different? The, well, they're very much they're in, they're their own people. You know, obviously they don't live together. Um, you know, they live quite far apart. They've got their own career has their own work going on you know they do catch up they keep in touch they don't talk every day like really close family do but they're you know there's real love for them there there always was even through the beef a few years ago yeah you just need them to play that out but then you just deal, deal with them as individuals just like you, you would do any other talent um so it, just because they're brothers that hasn't mattered no you, you need to give both respect you don't get in, embroiled with taking sides you can't do that you know <laughs> You can't, can't take sides with whether you, you agree with one of them or the other. But I think right now, Deji's got the support. He, he's, his brother got his back. He only wants the best for him, even if he's critical of him. Um, and that'll only be good for Deji. And, and Deji knows that, you know. Um, it's the younger, older brother thing. He'll always listen to his older brother, even if our older brother can be a bit harsh in his eyes. Or, as it turns out, he's normally quite right. Liam, just before I let you go, I just want to get your thoughts on Logan Paul. Um, obviously, he recently fought Floyd Mayweather, the man who... Many to consider the best fighter of, of this generation. Just your thoughts on that and Logan's outing with Floyd? I thought he did well. You know, I, I mean, there's only so much you can do when there's that weight gap and that, that reach distance. Um, you know, it's been many years since Pretty Boy Floyd was knocking out people anyway. Uh, yes, clearly he's a 10 times better fighter than Logan. But, you know... <sighs> Logan's a, Logan was a, is a, used to be a good state wrestler, you know, back in his, his, his uh, school and uh, high school days uh, back in America there. So, and you, you could see it as soon as he got within the reach of those long arms, he, was, he wasn't letting Floyd go anywhere with anymore. So, and Floyd said that himself. And that's really what slowed and made the fight a little bit dull, really, in the you know, fifth round onwards. Logan was tired. He just was wanting to get through as a moral victory. It was clearly, it was, it was clearly a mismatch, but Floyd wasn't going to take too many risks didn't need to he was clearly winning showed enough uh in terms of getting the fight yeah it was okay i mean we, we actually were talking to showtime as well about jj and jj we had didn't want any of it you know he said what's the point in getting beaten up um even for a few million doesn't need didn't need the money to be beaten up in that and also it takes away from the credibility of what he does it's a little bit of a different uk and us mindset really um so good on logan for doing it you know he must have been really nervous <laughs> that night going in against floyd and he got through it and i think he's super happy i don't think it's come at, floyd's come away with much uh you know in the way of you know obviously he thinks everyone thinks he's and he has you know what was it uh legalized bank robbery and all that and you know but he's wound people up for years like that and but you still you still like whether you like or hate floyd you still want to watch him don't you so it, it is what it was there wasn't a sellout crowd uh pay-per-view sounded like it did pretty well but um yeah, it wasn't much of a spectacle. I wouldn't go as far as Eddie Hearn's reaction when he was going how it was absolute dis- a disgrace. It wasn't a disgrace. It was an entertainment show. It's a shame, maybe. It would have been great if, if there'd have been a, a bit, a, you know, a stoppage and Floyd had been able to show a bit more. But uh, Logan, did. he's not going to let him do that, is he? He's going he's gonna to slow it down best he can and um, get through it and bank the check and move on. Right, Liam, we will leave that there now. I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you speaking to me. I know you're busy, man. You have all the stuff to take care of. So thank you for your time and thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. My pleasure, Andy.